Oh my my. Checking the mic. Hello and welcome to Fabrically Speaking Live. This is season three, episode eight, take two. And I am your host, Claire Raleigh, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And we had technical difficulties and I'm not able to use the service that I tried to use. So I think we're just gonna go back to just been going live in one place and stop going through this because we were doing pretty good when we were just in one place and I'll uh, keep trying on the other side but sorry it took so long to come back to you and thank you for hanging out you guys are so sweet to uh, still be here so uh, in this episode I'm going to be showing talking about doing needle turn invisible patchwork applique and this is one of the products that I'm going to be showing you is the crafters edge fab dies and these this is one way of getting your your hexy shapes and this is the actual set that it comes with it allows you to do bigger hexes than the traditional size and we also have the english paper piecing die sets with all of the different shapes so that you can create the amazing designs that people are creating i think one of the one of the quilts they're using this is or with is what they call a one block wonder have any of you done that or do you are you aware of that particular style of quilting it is unbelievable and uh <laughs> i love you too you guys so i just i gave it a good go didn't i i mean we did it like five times and each time only once did restream work so i'm and they won't talk to you on the phone, so I'm just going to have to, I don't know, give up on that? I don't like giving up on anything. I'll never give up on you guys. And I do want to try going live in the school, seeing how that works. If you guys are willing to volunteer to be my guinea pigs for the first time going live within the school. And if you don't know, I do have a free online school called create with claire rowley located on the mighty networks platform and my location for that is create.clairerowley.com and when this video is all over we're done being live i will have new description and new links and everything within the description so <laughs> sorry for the flub up the neat thing about these these dies is that you can go larger and I know this is going to be like a repeat for those of you who were watching before but I'm probably just going to delete that first take off of uh, YouTube so a, a panel or a piece of fabric like this would provide you a variety of different size flowers and you could start out with uh, I actually don't know if it's mathematically possible so I shouldn't say that but I've been wanting to try it to see if we can't do different size hexes and create a solid block by combining maybe we have to combine some of these other little shapes in order to do that and back to my question have you guys seen the one block wonder quilts they are absolutely stunning and a lot of these people are hand sewing them together so i've been wanting to show you how you can join your fabrics together using the satin edge foot and not see the stitch on the top when you're finished. So if you've ever done a uh, hexy quilt and sat there and hand sewed all those little hexies together, raise your hand. And I want to applaud you because it's astounding. And one of one of my uh, customers or students actually sent me a picture and she did a king size hexy quilt and she was on the quilt like under it while hand sewing. Her daughter took the picture and sent it to me and it was just <gasps> phenomenal that is patience I don't have the patience for that so I'm gonna just look at the chat for a second and know that I don't have the normal big chat because I'm amazed I was able to get this on at all everything went wrong on the technical side and let's just look for a second while I gather my thoughts hi Ellen 
I already said hello to Tina and Amy and Tammy and Darlene Woods, if I didn't, uh, hello and welcome, and it, and Diane, and let's see, Sherry, Sherry was winner of a giveaway not too long ago, and I'm, I'm trying also to help let everyone that was in, because I couldn't even post, I couldn't figure out how to post in my own school, my brain is a little stressed out, so let's do this, have some fun. Now, when I use this, know that I did break my shoulder a few years back. So I have one arm shorter than it ever was. And so I don't function the way that I used to. So I make this look harder than it is. If any of, any of you have the machine and you have longer arms, you, you probably just make this look like easy peasy. Know that this machine is different than a lot of the other machines in that it has the ability to change pressure like the presser foot on your sewing machine so it has these steel wheels Let's see if i can so see these steel wheels in here and so when you set your tension or pressure setting here it has more more cutting power so that you can cut through this is two, two layers of the fabric with Timtex fused on it, and I cut through that. That's a lot thicker than even seven layers of cotton fabric, which you can go up to seven layers of cotton fabric on this. So you use this. This is the platform that goes into the machine and, and pretty much slides through to the other side. And then we have this steel plate, and you can see it has some Hexies already cut out, and I don't know where those went because that would have been handy to have today. Hi, Sandra from Bay Area, California. Spent a lot of time there. So after you use it a while, the metal plate will kind of get a little disfigured like that. And what I do when that happens is I take it and kind of just push it like this against the table to just kind of get it to go flat. I have one plate that I did for my quilt where I cut out, I don't know how many of the eight and a half inch squares that I have a square set as well. So you can cut your squares and then you, and then there's other squares within the same pack. And I was able to cut off all the dog ears with just one slice. And I stacked a whole bunch on top so that that's a really neat, feature for that as well sewing by hand right now you are okay oh it was going so good too i don't know what happened everything just locked up i could still see you guys chatting but we i think i think it has something to do with facebook because facebook went down first all right enough to talk about that These are the tools by AppliQuick and the combination of the AppliQuick tools, the, the Crafter's Edge, this is the crossover two machine and I actually was consulting with the company on the reason it's this color. And I also tested and helped them to develop the different quilting die sets that are on there. And so I had it, this company has a, a warm space in my heart and I love the fact that you can't injure yourself or have children get hurt with it and you can even wear them on your wrist while you're working and and you're able to really see the actual shapes that you're going to cut out and uh i was thinking the butterflies but maybe i'll just do some flowers we got a little bit slowed down from that I hate to open the English paper piecing dies to do this. And since I do have all of the equivalent sizes in this set, I'm just gonna use this set to do that. And this is, this would be the stabilizer size and the stabilizer size is, is what you'll actually see when you're done. So this one would be too small to show that whole flower. So this seems really, really big, but this is the size of the stabilizer. So that will be what I can pick up by cutting. 
And then how you position it within that opening is what determines whether or not you get a really cool pattern or a, a circular pattern from cutting these out. Rather than cutting one out at a time, you can cut first some of your flowers out that are the same. By the way, I'll go a little bit slower so you can see all the, the different this is the official size of the English paper piecing dies that, or shapes that would be called out for any of the patterns. And uh, so you can see by the combination of all of these different pieces allows you to mix things up a bit and make math kind of bend to your will. And these are pretty affordable. I think they're each um, right around $10. So, you, you could have all of them and look how s little space that takes up just a little bit of space each of these also comes with a little pattern inside to help you get going I was gonna do such a good job now I have to actually you know it's it's not like I have actual time schedule You're sewing the hexes by hand and then appliquing on the on the background by hand. Yeah, post in the school. I'd like to see what you're saying. I have appliqued down some hexes before. Using the satin edge foot and my invisible applique technique. You use a zigzag stitch with invisible thread and go around the perimeter and you can't see any stitching when you're done. Then you can go from behind and cut out the back fabric, pull that fabric out, and it looks like you sewed your hexi into the hole of the same shape. All right, I said hello to everybody. I feel like going, um, a little reset. I guess I'm using this fabric. I'm looking for my large scissors. There we go. All right. Actually kind of feel good knowing next week I'm not doing that other thing. So we'll have a similar result. So if we are going to go live in the school and you guys want to do that, make sure that you have your notifications turned on inside of Create with Claire Rowley so that when I post to the school that we're going to start or go live that you actually, oh, I shouldn't cut it that small. Maybe I can't talk and do, I can't do two things at once today. This is a really cool fabric. I was thinking of doing something for Easter. Would you guys like to do that? Something fun and colorful. All right. I, I, I have, have you ever bought a piece of fabric and you never used it because you just loved looking at it when it wasn't made up into anything? If you have, do a thumbs up. And I can't tell if you guys are still there because no one's popped up in a little bit. This is a good one, too. All right, so I think I'll just do one, like, little hexy, and then I'm going to finish this, this circle, turning it under, and then I'll sew it and... Do a better video filmed and edited or maybe a little class inside of the school that isn't live for the world to see as I want to get more intimate with you guys in there. This is going to be something that would be available for the VIP club, a private little class like that. But the first time I go live, I just want to go live with all of you. I'm going to do the butterfly. I want a butterfly hexy. All right. Good. Thank you for saying you're still here. What time is it? I, I, I really can't stand that when I lose time. My brain was going good. I knew what I was saying. Now I'm all disheveled. Okay, so I'm going to pick which size hexi 
would be good for the butterfly. Another fabric that I absolutely love and have a hard time cutting. So this is going to be the stabilizer one. And that's the fabric one. And that's a bummer because it cuts into the other butterfly. I had a whole yard of this fabric, but I used it. I used it all up. That's okay. And what I what I have done is actually taken and put the stabilizer down and the fabric and chopped it up at the same time. I spent about two hours and I cut about 500 squares out for my quilt. And I really was expecting myself to be tired or to get really sore from rotating that, but I, I didn't. I guess that's because it does the, with the pressure setting, it does the, the hard work for you. So we're going to play around here and I'm going to cut a few of the applique, the stabilizers up first or at once. These are the two. I forgot already. So this is the stabilizer one. Okay. So that's kind of wasteful the way I have this laid out. <laughs> Try not to waste it. Stuff's precious. What's really neat about the stabilizer is it's firm enough to form your fabric. And yet, once you stitch it and you start moving the quilt around, it gets soft. And so it, it never really has to wash out, unlike what you try doing with your paper. Having to remove the paper inside. I know they have washable kinds now. Is is that what you use, Ellen? Are you using a, a wash away stabilizer inside or are you using AppliQuick products? Let's see. Oh, I hate cutting through these butterflies. This is an eight and a half inch platform, by the way. So when you get really good at this, you start thinking, how can I cut them all at once? I think I did the planning wrong again. And then you take a pin And you can poke certain elements in the butterfly, like there's one antennae, and I suggest doing it more than one location. So that, that antennae and then the bottom of the butterfly, and then you come over here and you do the same thing on the next piece. Does that make sense to you guys? Now you know that you have these two butterflies are lined up the same. And then you take and pull those away and place your die on top. I cut that one a little small. Oh, well, here we go. And then put this plate on top. The blades are facing down against the fabric. And then the handle comes out <laughs> and you start cranking it through. And now I'm not feeling or hearing any crunching at all. So I'm going to increase the pressure 
by turning the dial, but you don't want to do that when it's when the platform is beneath. So you bring it out, and I look and I see that right now it's it's on setting number ten. So I'm going up. I can't remember if it's up or down. It's still too easy. So it must be down. Yeah, so now the now those rollers are closer together and you're gonna hear crunching sound and it can be scary when you do it the first time. I went too far. We'll go to seven. So it's not as crunchy sounding. Kind of a little scary. And I go back because, like I mentioned before, my arms are really short. <laughs> I'd have to stand up in order to get it out of there. Another thing I do is I go like this and flip it over. Take the platform off and look to see if the blade cut through before you move it. Because once you move it, well, you can't run it through again should anything have caused it to not cut fully all the way around you used a little paper cardstock samples so now I have two hexes with a butterfly perfectly centered and my stabilizer is all ready to go. Another thing that AppleQuick offers is Hexi's already cut out. Would you guys be interested in me adding that to the inventory of what we offer of their products? She sells, I think, 200 Hexi's in a pack. Okay, here we go. Now we have to also make sure that we position that stabilizer in the right spot. So actually fusing the fabric to the fabric, fusing the stabilizer to the fabric before. No, that won't work. We have to have this smaller. I'm thinking it through. I lost some of my IQ from having that shut down. So that's in essence how you use the crafter's edge Crossover two. The, the names are too close. Two C's. I, I tend to struggle to say their names. The machine weighs a good 30 pounds or 25 pounds. This is not a plastic machine. Probably not 30 pounds because that was too easy for me. Poor little butterflies <laughs> make me feel bad for cutting through their wings. Maybe I should design some fabric just for this and to utilize the fabric so no butterfly wings get chopped off. Now I really want to make this, this part has to match that part. So I'm sorry I'm being quiet. I have to think because there's this cute little flower right there that I, I don't want to cut off either. So that's what I'm going to use as my governance for how I position this on here and the wings. Poor little butterfly. Sounds like a song. Poor butterflies. <laughs> I'm in a really good mood despite having that issue. Oh, you never tried that, Tammy? And with the, the tablet, the cutter pillar, I would have been able to see better to line up my stabilizers. I don't think I ironed that on the right side. The iron must have shut off. <laughs> it 
It's more important the wings are good, so I'm going to just focus on the wings. And I do have another video that went well <laughs> where I show how to, to do this, and there's a heart shape, and there's a pattern link to that. And I believe it was a video on a bunch of different appliques. I can't remember. Oh, I may as well just iron two. Well, 2022 has start, started off with technical issues for sure. Shoot steam through it because there's no paper. And I'm going to turn it off because instead of using some type of a fusible to get this applique on, should I want to use them as appliques? I did say applique, didn't I? So I didn't, I ended up showing you hexes instead of applique. We do the same thing though. We use this stabilizer and you can draw out really curvy pieces. So I'll show you how to handle a hexi with turning it under and how to do a circle. And then I'll do a little bit of sewing and we'll call that a show and, and then I'll do more. And I really wanted to create a really beautiful little pattern for you guys to do anyway. I need you guys to start asking what you want me to teach. So in the chat or in the inside of the, what do they call it? The comment section after the video ends, if you put your comments in there and say what it is that you would like me to teach next, I would really appreciate it. It would help me to formulate my next show. It's another product that I stick in my scrap bag so I don't throw them away. I know how to identify the different stabilizers by how they look because I see them so much. One of the things you use when you do needle turning is for Appliquick, she recommends you have a, a pad of paper like this and you have one side to, to a supply or apply your glue and the other side is where you, well, I'll just show you. So I did the Dresden flower. I'm going to take a sip. I'm going to mute myself for a second, so don't get worried. Okay, so I, I definitely accidentally grabbed the wrong next size up hexi. So it's super big, and I could have saved the butterfly wings after all. Because they're only they're only like this much bigger, and if any of you s noticed that and were yelling at the computer, I'm sorry, or I didn't hear you. <laughs> now, Rosa actually says when you when you do hexes and you and you do the little ones, rather than shaping it as I'm doing now, but I'm going to show you both. She says that to do the hexes to just make a circle. So I'll do one with a circle and one matching the shape. I know that we have these circle sets that go down to the size, to this size here, to the quarter inch size. So you can actually turn under a fabric that small using the tools that I'm showing you now. I'm going to use the Appliquit glue. I thought I had it out. When you purchase it, you get two, two of the little twisties of glue. And this is a unique glue to any of the others that came before. In this tube is a glue that 
has a retarded drying time. So you or extended drying time. And I've never had one dry up. So when you when you use this, you're going to be applying it on the fabric and and applying a knot and you'll be a lot and you'll be coming off of the fabric to get it coated really well. So if I take the foot off, then I can slide this pad up here. Oh, I just ruined that needle. Don't do that, you guys. I don't remember. I don't think that. I think the Dresden flower. Let me pull it out. When I did this, I didn't. So the Dresden flower is just uh, blanket stitch applique and satin stitch applique. And that was done with just flat applique technique. It was a heart when I did this. And it was a design I designed, which was a very complicated heart. It would have been great for Valentine's Day. And I was going to show it and talk about it and do this last week. But when I ran out of everything, because I guess Rosa did not go to a show that she normally goes to. So everybody got to our site. These are the tools that she has created to stop you from injuring your hands by forming with your fingers and going around like that. Can't wait till my nails are all the way grown out. But they're, they really are starting to look good to me. So here we have the one that's cut the right way. And so you go off the fabric and it gets on the paper. That's why she suggests having a pad. And then there's each of the tools have a pointy end. One is a little bit pointier than the other. And then on this side, one is shaped like a spatula. And this one still has some glue on it. <laughs> this is to replace your fingers from pushing like, from pushing down like that. I can't get the camera to see that. So a lot of times when we do things, we put our fingers down like that. So this is the plant your fingers tool. And then it, it holds, it holds the, the fabric really steady as you work with it. See, I, I, can't get, I can't get it to move. But when I pick up one toe, now it allows me to spin it all the way around. Yeah, I cut the shape out with the crafter's edge thingy. <laughs> with the die cuts. So it, you could just cut out all your stabilizers and then cut circles. I don't know if this is going to be a good camera angle for you. Try to keep my hair out of the way. Yeah, so it's on there. This is not designed for synthetic fabrics, this glue. It works on all natural fibers, but on the synthetics, it it doesn't bond. So then like this, Rose is so much better at this than I am. Whoopsie, don't lose your cap. And because it, it has a slower drying time, you can glue around a larger area and not have to worry about it drying before you get to the end of that. I kind of feel like a surgeon when I use these tools. And this is neat because she made them ergonomic. So they're big where you hold them with your hand and then they taper down. Oh yeah, then she goes, after you put the glue on, then you move it to the other side or to the other piece of paper. Now you don't have to worry about getting any glue on the face of the fabric as you work to bring the edges up. I 
I also recommend having a damp washcloth or some kind of cloth to wipe your tools off should you get some on it so that you don't end up getting it on your paper, which I didn't bring into the sewing room today. See how it's still wet? Now we have to deal with these points. And when we flip it over, you can see how sometimes there's a little bit of a little bit of bumpy. Well, that's what the points are for, so that you can you can just sit there and really like slide slippy slide it around until it's until you look not at the fabric but like look at the line that you that you see on the paper look for that shadow and what you want is that to be as straight as possible or to be as consistent so you see how I'm able to just kind of little tiny movements at a time and you can split this apart there we go pinch this together so you get a really good point and then flatten it out all that still all that mobility is still present even though it's been longer than a lot of glues would have allowed for me to do this kind of manipulation so it'll be interesting to see what it's like when I do a circle piece instead of a pointy piece And I trust Rosa because she's done huge quilt, big like a, a quilt the size of three king size quilts that hangs in her booth. That's all hexes. So bring this together and then flatten it out. Now I've got these two to do. Won't be as hard for you to switch sides of the paper because you won't be doing it on your sewing machine, will you? I will add a heart applique piece because I still have the pattern. So I'll add that pattern in to the school, into the Fabrically Speaking Live area so that you guys can practice with it. It's a really pretty heart. If I can remember where I put it, I can still show it to you today. But I did all this organizing. So I don't know where it is right now. Not too bad on, on the time it takes. Uh, other, there are other types of, or methods of getting your fabric folded under. The one that I came up with early on in the early 90s was to use a similar stabilizer, a permanent dressmaker stabilizer that's really, really fine. And instead of turning under, you stitch around the edge at a 16th inch seam allowance all the way around the edge. And then you cut a hole in the stabilizer, then turn it right side out after grading, or you can grade it instead of using a, a eighth inch seam allowance. And, and then you end up with an empty pillow and it's great for trapanto applique. And that would be how I would do a Dresden plate center because then you can make it puffy I must not have any glue there so here's another thing that you can use the spatula side for just to take a little glue off and stick it where you need it oops my finger hit it so you go into there and now wipe it off and instead of getting it all over your fingers Forgot to switch sides of the paper. Oh, I don't have my other tool in my hand. I'm not doing good. See, it's so much easier to use these. Our fingers are just, well, mine are a little bit too chubby for really handling some, such a small movement of the fabric. Do any of you have her tools and have you used them yet? Okay, so now we're gonna 
try out the circle and see how how well it turns for the circle but not bad huh okay here we go so i think when you glue it's actually good to have this tool as well she probably does that and and she also has the tweezers which are in stock you guys we got 12 of them in that wasn't as many as i wanted to get in but she also has these the tweezers that lets you hold the tiny little circles. So if you're going to do a really small piece, even the tools can't really hold it. But this allows you to pick up your teeny pieces of fabric and hold it really well. And the spring loaded behavior of these takes the pressure off your joints. So you won't get sore from squeezing these. One of you or a couple of you have these. Say how you feel about them. It's like the strongest hold on a piece of thread I've ever had in a tweezer as well. Back to this. And as I hold this, the uh, spatula one, I kind of wish I could see the color. I should be wearing my glasses. I'm not wearing them. So after something is washed and you use the stabilizer, it's, you can't even tell it's in there. It's super soft, in case you're wondering. And then it's permanently in there, so it it's stabilizes and supports the fabric. Yeah, I'm putting my glasses on. If only I could insert a new brain today. So instead of holding the spatula or the tools like this, like a pen, you take them and you hold them like a, like a, what are they called? Drumsticks. Where, what else would you hold that would, would be a pencil in doing coloring and art. I'll just get off the glue side. So this is the clean side. I don't have to worry about glue getting on my fabric now. So you see how it's you're scooping and sliding that flat edge and bringing the fabric up along the edge of the stabilizer. And this sits on the, the edge of the stabilizer. And that's what gets you so accurately positioned. So I went all the way around. I'm not sure if I got enough on there. Oh, that did go really well. She's smart. <laughs> so here we go. We're at the point again. And when I had it cut to shape, I had to... I don't know. I don't think that's as clean of a corner. That one went well. This is probably cut a little bit big. Is anyone timing me? <laughs> How fast can you turn a hexi? After a while, it would be quick. You haven't used them yet, Donna? You just got them though, right? Yeah, that one, let's see. Of course, I haven't tried to form the corners yet. That corner is perfect. These would make fun little coasters too, wouldn't they? You weren't gonna say anything, Tina? What, what did I say? You're supposed to catch my all my oopsies. That's your job, Tina. You and Amy. That's not how you, that's not how you hold drumsticks. You hold them they bounce off your finger like that. Instead of like this. Instead of like that. Do you do are you a drummer? I'm not. <laughs> I'll have to look into that. I knew someone that played the drums and they showed me how to hold them. They showed me, so maybe they did, sh no, I'm pretty sure they showed me that. Okay, I'm not teaching you how to drum. <laughs> I like it when you guys check on me and correct me if I say something wrong. 
Once again, I got to do that little scoop because there's one spot that didn't have any glue on it. So put a little in there. It's just like having miniature fingers. Now we can take and use this as an applique. And since I did say this was on applique, but I also wanted to show you how you can join your hexes together. So I, maybe I'll join them together and on one end and then put them on something and applique around. Does that sound like a good idea? This was before my glasses went on. <laughs> so how many minutes has, has it been since I glued this and it's still a little pliable right there? So some people complain that it takes too long to dry, <laughs> but that's the point of it. And there are other glue sticks that you can use when you're doing something that you don't need this much time to manipulate. I still think my mind does a better job when I cut the shape, the same shape. This is how I think it worked though, right or correctly. So it's just one little fold and that is a nice little point. Okay, breathe in. So we could take and join them together like that. Bottom to bottom or top to top? I think I'll do this. So we're going to sew across. And when you do this, because I've never done made a quilt like this. And uh, I'm trying to find it. So Ellen, is, do you usually have a back already before you join them together? Or you join them together and then remove... They have you remove the paper and then you put it back on. There's so many different ways of doing everything. So now what I'm what I'm going to do is use the invisible thread and I use nylon invisible thread and the type I'm going to use is our 100% nylon, four thousandths in diameter, so that this teeny tiny thread, very very thin, super soft, and I'm going to use the color that that disappears the most on this fabric which I already know will be clear but I'll show you how both of them appear on the fabric so that you can see how I choose which color of the invisible thread to use another thread that you could use is invisifil and just try to match it to the fabric the invisifil thread not to be confused with invisible is 100 weight polyester so I'll lay all three out here so that you can See what I'm talking about. So this wouldn't match and it would show because it, it doesn't match if I can grab. See, I'll grab the right color. Pretty sure I have one of these already open. It's okay, I can have more than one open. And it's a it's actually a color. So the difference between nylon and polyester is also how it appears. One is in one has a, like a see-through or translucent quality to it, and then you have a more opaque. So think of polyester as kind of like opaque paint, and the nylon thread is like a translucent paint or what do they call it? I think that is what they use, the same terminology. So all three threads laying over the fabric that you're going to do. They're all so thin. Do I have all three in my hand? Yeah. So I've got all three threads there and then you lay them over the fabric. And then whichever one shows up the most, well, you don't want that one. You want the one that you can't see, which is the clear. This one is almost as good as this one, though. 
But the invisible will definitely win in the invisible nature. So one of the things I'm going to do is switch to a really small needle because we want to make a small hole in the fabric. That edge right there, we don't want to ha increase this, make a large hole and then it'll, it'll show up. So I'm going to go all the way down to a 10. I think this is the first time I've used a 10 needle. Could not do that with paper. The paper would be too, too firm. And, and when, and when your needle would go through that, it would, it would likely break your needle that coupled with the glue on that paper would make the glue or the paper a little stiff. So let's see if I have a tin. Another needle you could use is the 7511 stretch, which is one of my favorite needles of all time. It is, it is a flat needle. So even though it's a, a larger needle in the, in the sense that you can put larger thread through it, it is still small, like a tin in, di in diameter, because they kind of flatten it out and make it smaller that way rather than making it smaller wide ways. Yeah, watercolor paint is kind of see-through. And then you have acrylic paint, and, but there, and then you have to add a medium to get that same behavior out of a, an acrylic or add a lot of water. So very similar to that. Here's a 10. That wasn't too long of a wait. This, this is called edge joining. And it is one of the techniques in the Creative Feet Technical Guide and Workbook and supported by the Creative Feet Techniques video. So if you have, if you got or purchase my educational special, you have the instructions to do edge joining. And we bring the two edges together and we stitch them with a stitch that joins the two together without having to take one fabric and stagger it on top of the other. So you butt your two edges up with each other and it, you need a stitch that stitches in, in both directions, left and right, or one even better would be one that stitches three stitches, one in the middle and then one on each side, like a three-step zigzag stitch or the trico stitch. I took my snap-on adapter off. <laughs> Why did I do that? I'm always wanting to play with my octi hoops. I think my subconscious mind wants to play with the octi hoops right now. The satin edge foot is the best foot for whenever you're trying to sew accurately either a straight stitch, a zigzag, or some of your decorative stitches. If the guide wire or guide pin in the zigzag opening on the satin edge foot doesn't interfere with the stitch pattern and then you break your needle on the needle or on that guide, which I will show you momentarily. It doesn't matter if you use an invisible thread in the bobbin because we're gonna sew on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the deco bob bobbin in the bottom or in the bobbin. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I'm relaxed. It's not like I have an appointment that's, you know, it's just I'm going out to dinner tonight. This was an invisible thread or Invisafill thread as well. And I can't remember what I used it for, but I did something in between last week and this week. I also reinforced my presser cubby from last week to make it stand up better. I, I don't remember if I did that with you guys or not, but I stitched all around the base and then I stitched on the sides here, did a little, a little pleat or dart to give it a little bit more stability on the sides. This would have been better with Timtex in it. I may, I may do that for another one because I really like, I really like the, sh the size and the, the shape of it, but the top, the front kind of gets caught with my arm and stuff. 
So have you guys, did any of you make that last week? Did you make one? Are you tired of your presser rolling off your table enough to make it? Ah. Trying to think if I can if I can teach you my bunny for the Easter basket. I have a pre-recorded video on my YouTube channel in the playlist that is named Claire Raleigh's Creative Notions. So in the Creative Notions playlist in my YouTube channel, you'll find an Easter basket. And I have a, an additional pattern to make a bunny. The bunny actually holds onto the basket and his feet stick out the bottom. And that is another pattern that's already ready to go that I could teach if you guys are wanting Easter projects. I know we're living in difficult times and you may not be getting together with people for for Easter, but what do you think? Should I do an Easter project? Should we learn how to make a, a bunny that goes in a basket? Sometimes it, it doesn't work on the needle thread or on the nylon thread. It worked. Your presser doesn't roll off the table, Tina. You know, I, it's probably that this table is is bearing the weight of this sewing machine. It's so heavy that it's, and I have carpet under me. So the wheels are sinking into the carpet. And so my table is tilted and everything rolls off. So I'm going to select different stitch options and kind of talk about it. There is a stitch on my machine that, that is called the couching stitch. And I was thinking it might be a good one. And I'll draw a picture of it. So you can see what it looks like in case you have it. And it does, it does this. It goes over, comes back does a stitch and then instead of going back over like a blind hem stitch it goes to this side and then it comes over and then does a stitch and it just that's its job it just keeps jetting over and connecting the fabrics and the stitch is relatively narrow but we can we can make this stitch like that narrow and so that you don't even see the stitch that box that box is a box of checks The needle box that I have is the, I mean, I know we really don't use checks very much, or I don't use checks anymore, but that's what this is. This is ancient. This is probably like 30 years old, maybe even 33, maybe the year, maybe before I even started my company, I, I just put my needles in there. So do you like my box? It was free. <laughs> So we're going to give that a try and I'm going to try it without doing it on this to start and try it by, by just joining two other fabrics together. A similar scenario, the fabric is folded in half. Tomorrow's Friday, tomorrow's presser making day. Last Friday, I only was able to make one presser and it's been just an odd week. I had a, a bunch of different uh, things that didn't allow me to get in there. And today I was gonna make pressers and I had the heaters on in there and the circuit breaker went off in the middle of the night. So it was too cold for the machines to run. Isn't that awesome? how nicely that presses. There we go. I can't wait to try the video option in the school now. So I'm thinking, I don't want to let you down and say something and then have something happen. So 
I will, I'll notify the VIP members in the school. I'll, I'll announce it in the school so that any of you that want to join the VIP group can. So you can see if you center a zigzag stitch in the middle, I'm going to do both. I'm going to try this stitch and then I'll try the zigzag, the regular zigzag stitch. Hi, Tinkerbell. Hi, baby. Oh, I see sleepy. So the width on this stitch is set for three and a half millimeters wide, and I actually have no idea if that isn't perfect for that, because if it's overall three and a half millimeters wide, well, that would be like a half a millimeter and a half on this side and a millimeter, well, something like that. So we'll just go ahead and try it without the guide in place first so that I don't break the needle and just hand sew it to see where the path goes. It doesn't look like it's moving the needle. What am I on? Oh, I, I didn't push the button. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, it's way over there. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's big. So overall, this stitch is not three three and a half millimeters wide. Mm -hmm. Overall, it's much bigger. I'm going to two and a half millimeters wide. Yes to the Easter Bunny. He's really cute. He has glasses and stuff. It's it's done with the Octi hoops, you guys. Free motion, applique, and embroidery on the bunny, and then it's in little pieces. Okay, so that's the center. So now that I've done a full rotation of the entire stitch pattern, I know that that is the center. That is the stitch that goes between the two pieces. Bring the needle down, bring the guide over to the needle. This is how we know we're not going to hit the needle if I went too far down. There we go. So now I turn the nut, moving the guide over to the needle. So if the needle is down and I move the guide over to it, can the needle hit the guide? It can't because it's beside it. It's beside itself. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right, so I'm doing another whole entire rotation because I don't know if the width I chose is going to be bigger. It is. So that, that looks perfect. And now I just bring the two fabrics together at the guide. And that's where you focus your eye. And I'm, I just really got to put my glasses on <laughs> All right, we'll play around with Easter bunnies. So I saw the needle kind of bend now that I have my glasses on. That's too close. Take it over just a smidge. I might have to go to a different setting. And, and like I said, I didn't know if this stitch would work. But I think it's a really cool stitch for edge joining. Ugh. Too far away to use magnifying glasses. Got to get closer. Yeah, that needle is definitely deflecting. It's a very, very narrow width, and the wire itself, the guide wire in the foot, is a one millimeter wide wire, so the stitch has to be able to go past that. I'm probably just going to go back to what I always did, which was just the regular zigzag stitch. This just makes it a little bit too stressful, <laughs> even for me. Because the stitch is not a normal... Ugh. Yeah, I can't do it. So my, I'm, I'm too in a nervous state to, to use that stitch. So I'm just going to go to a standard zigzag stitch. And we're taking it down to a, a, like a one and a half millimeter wide zigzag. That's super narrow. And now I want to position the the wire on the foot, the guide wire, which I haven't shown and I should. I will in a second. So it has to be able to clear the, uh, the, the guide on the foot, which is a wire, and still hit the, the fabrics. So 
Do I have to go to two? I don't remember going that wide on the width. But I tell you this, when you do it and you got it right, it's fast. So this is eliminating the hand sewing. How many stitches could you have done in this amount of time by hand? And that is flat construction. Now, as you manipulate the fabric and move it around, that zigzag stitch, because it's so small, ends up completely disappearing in that join. So now I'm going to do it on the actual hexes. Isn't that neat, though? You can use that in fashion as well when you have a front of a, of a blouse and you want to join two fabrics together and you don't want to have to use any facing. It's a really neat join. And after you've done that, you could put rhinestones down the center of that to make it even stronger. So here we go. We take these two hexes together. And the focus isn't on the needle. The focus is on the guide and getting it in the middle of these two hexes. It's also making sure that your, your V is centered. Oh, I've got so much stuff in front of me. Get over there. I wish I had a magnifying glass on the machine. They used to make a, a, a mirror or a magnifying glass called the Magna Stitch. And I keep thinking that my light, because it's a circle, I keep thinking that's a magnifying glass in there, but it's not. So now you know why sometimes I seem to be a little bit uncoordinated. So here's the focus and bring the fabrics together and ignore the needle once it's in position. What number is the stitch? The stitch I'm using on the baby lock is stitch 1-10, just your regular zigzag stitch without a knot, but it wouldn't hurt to use a knot stitch set. And the width of the stitch is set for 2.0 millimeter. That means one side is one millimeter stitch swinging over to it, and the other one has another one millimeter wide stitch swinging over to it. And it's the fact that you don't have to focus and, and be real accurate with, it, with the fabric that makes this so wonderful. So then I would use a knot stitch and tie, tie that off so that it doesn't come apart. The needle goes over the guide wire. And as I said, everything in the stabilizer and the stitch will soften up and there it there it is. What do you think? Speedy? Would have been a lot faster if we didn't have camera failures on on the first take for today. So now I'm going to applique this down or I can applique a circle down. Want me to applique this down? I don't really have anything to put it on. I had a piece of fabric out to do this. Does the needle go over the guide? It goes over the guide. So you, when you look at the guide, the white part of the guide is three times wider than the actual guide, which is that wire. And the wire is positioned in the middle of the two sides of the white guide. So it swings over the wire. And then you just bring the fabrics together at the guide. And the wire is sunk in to in between those two fabrics. And the stitch, when the needle swings to the right and then swings over to the left, it pulls the fabric together. The tension of a zigzag stitch using one bobbin 
causes the fabric or the stitch to tunnel in, right? But the wire on the satin edge foot stops the fabric from tunneling. So if you were to try this without our foot, and I could do that for you a little bit. We'll do that. I'll, I'll take, I'll move the guide wire over and do a little with this fabric so that you can see what would happen without the guide. So right now it's centered. If I take the guide and move it all the way over to the right, well, it's no longer a part of the foot. It's just over there. Now I have to use my eyesight to line up the needle so that it hits this side and then that side. So the, the ability to not look is what's huge. Now I have to guide the fabric. Like I'm a water skier on, on the lake. I have to stay in the wake of the boat. The guide prevented me from not being where I needed to be. See how I have to kind of figure out where to where to put the fabric beneath the foot now. And I'm good at this, so I can do a pretty good job. But I'm not I'm no longer looking here at something sitting still. Now I'm looking here at something moving and I already kind of felt a little dizzy because I never watch my needle. <laughs> I forgot how woozy it makes you feel. So I'm steering, but if this was a bigger piece, I would I would have a harder time. If there were a bunch of hexes here, I would have a much more difficult time guiding straight, especially when you approach a scene. So does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Okay, so see how see how different that looked? This is the one with the guide and this is without the guide and the stitches visible more. What is that? Is that the bobbin thread? Let me get that thread out of the way so I give it a fair comparison. So this is the edge joining. And this is a high, this is, this is the size of a bobbin, right? So if you look at this and you're looking at your screen, this is a big giant bobbin. It's much bigger than it really is. So that stitch is much bigger than it really is. And you can see it really well because I have it zoomed in at a high resolution. So for my eye, when I'm looking at this right here, especially if without a light, there's like, it's, it's just looks like a seam. It doesn't look as if there's a stitch there at all. So you want me to applique this or do you want me to show you a harder shape would, which would be to maintain a curve as you're sewing? This little circle. Vote. The technique that I created where you use a fusible stabilizer and you make an empty pillow and the back of it, we cut through. The reason that you can't use her stabilizer for that is her stabilizer is terrible. And the one that I, the stabilizer I use for fusible applique for circles and shapes in the invisible applique technique is a garment quality, really thin shirting stabilizer. And it locks the bias in fabric, but it doesn't add any weight to the fabric. So you stitch around, you actually don't sew an eighth inch seam allowance. You draw on the stabilizer, the shape that you wanna cut out. And then you stitch or on that line several times around with a really short stitch length. And then you, then you cut, you cut the fabric really close to that stitching line and then cut a slit in the stabilizer, then turn it right side out. The fusible side of the stabilizer is now on the outside. Originally it was on the inside facing the right side. So it's a whole nother lesson for another day. Maybe I'll do another, another, one like this, but actually do tripunto, which is what makes that fabulous because you can actually stuff behind the fabric and then you stitch that back up and then you iron the fat, the stabilizer to your base and that tripunto or that puffiness that everyone's trying to get doing free motion, having the batting remain and flattening down all the areas around it. That is not the, that's not how tripunto originally came about. Trapunto is the stuffing of fabric and and then we do like two rows of stitching, take a hand sewing needle and some yarn and pull yarn through the two rows of stitching to create stems. And you can do that with our pearls and piping foot and skip the step 
of the hand sewing part. So I have plans to maybe create just like one little project where you learn all the different patchwork techniques in one. Does that sound like, sound like a good class? I got to pick something up. So I dropped something. There you go. I didn't, I didn't finish this one. I left a part of it not done. So I'm going to finish that up real quick. For those of you who are joining now, this is live and after it, the show ends, you will have access to this on our YouTube channel. What I'm using right here is the AppliQuick tools and the AppliQuick glue. And you're able to secure this to the AppliQuick stabilizer. I had the lid off. Don't don't have the lid off. This has a really tight bond as well, or closure. These are the tools. This replaces your fingers from spreading apart. And that pressure that you do when you push down, when you see the skin change color when you're pushing down that white knuckle look, you know, that's, a, that's a lot of pressure on your joints. So a long period of time of doing that, you can cause joint damage. Let me take and position this this way and I can't move the fabric, but if I tip a toe up, now I can spin it around. And this is how you can spin your fabric around without stopping and picking it up and moving it around. So this saves you time and it also saves your hands from getting hurt. Once we bring it up, now I have the ability to, to make that flattened out area more round because this glue doesn't dry quickly. Gives you time to manipulate your fabric. And now I'm going to, I'm going to applique this piece down onto another piece of fabric. And I'm not going to do so using this glue because lots of this is expensive and lots of layers of this can add density to the fabric and make it more difficult. Ah, oh, I put a denim needle in. Make it more difficult for the small needle. We use a 70-10 needle when doing the needle turn or hand applique. I must have put, you know what I did, you guys? I took the needle out of the machine and I put it right back in and I never used the small needle. So that would have been even more invisible with the small needle. Know that a denim needle and a leather needle cut through fibers and it will make a weak quilt. So we want to use a universal needle or the stretch needle. Do not use the denim needle for this. Ah. So I'm not going to go through the trouble of finding another 7010 needle. And see, how, what can I stitch this on? This is kind of cool. That looks good together. Yellow complements blue. Just in the savings of time here. Now, if I try stitching around this, this is loose. So we want to secure it and we don't want to add bulk because we want a quilt to be soft so that when you lay on it, it's not like laying on a board. I have this design I designed for Mother's Day and it would be a really nice applique and embroidery combination and we could do that and then quilt around it. So this is our liquid based glue and it's a water soluble stabilizer and you just lay it along the edge and then slide your finger across it to make it to make sure all of your edges are covered and this then is able to be positioned, positioned. <laughs> I got new words coming out of my mouth today. You should wait for it to fully dry so that it doesn't move on you, but I'm not going to wait. Because the stitch is so small, it will not cause puckering to stitch this next to that unless you take your hands and push down. So if you tend to be a person that pushes down, then you may need to use a stabilizer. If should you use a stabilizer, our hold light would be the best option for this. 
So what I'm doing now is I, I'm thinking about what stitch I should use, and I'm using a one millimeter wide width. So one millimeter wide width, one swing going on the applique, the other swing going right off the edge. That is nearly impossible to achieve unless you go really slow without this foot. So what we do is you're going to bring your needle down in the position that it goes off the edge. So the right swing of this teeny tiny zigzag stitch. You may not even see the needle swing. So that was the right swing. Now we're in the left swing. So now I want to go off the edge. When I know it's off the edge, then you move the guide over to the right of the needle. This particular technique does not swing over the guide wire. I forgot to thread the needle. <laughs> In case you like this fabric, it's Eden Tula. Free Spirit. I was across from them at a show and we bartered. I, I was just, I was loving their fabric and I thought I should do something without batik today because I keep getting people going, do, do you only use batik? <laughs> All right, so left swing goes on the applique, right swing goes off the edge. Got to get my glasses on. Swing on, swing off. When it's off, it's over. So, okay, so it looks good. It's in the correct position. So now you, instead of watching the needle, now you watch the front, the white part of the guide, and you see how it's kind of pulled apart, how the curve is leaving the white guide because it's round. So you keep your eye focused where the fabric is touching right now and don't, don't move your eye from there. And as you go around, your needle is going off the edge. And if you look at the needle, it will leave the edge. So you want to make sure that you don't get your eye focused on, on that needle. And it's so tempting because it's close to it. You can have the needle stop down should you want and lift and turn as you go around. And this fabric's a lot bigger it's, and there's so much stuff on my table. So I don't, I don't even, do I know how to have this sewing machine stop with a needle down? This would be one time when you could, but you have needle down option on your machine. So there's really no need to, to do that, to have it stop down all the time. It's kind of distracting for me at least. And what if you really just want the needle to always stop down on the left? Well, then it doesn't always do that. So it is touching. <laughs> The needle is actually touching. I thought I put, I had a good idea to keep my pen in my presser bat basket. Oh. So the guide is shaped like this and it has a nut that you turn to adjust it. And inside of this guide is a wire that is inside of the plastic. And then it comes out of the plastic. And it is one, one thousandths. So I put the wrong numbers, the numbers in the wrong spot. There, it's only, no, it's not. It's ten thousandths. I'm teaching too much. My son would say, teaching too much. Stop teaching. <laughs> All right, so the sewing machine needle is right there, right next to the guide wire. That's where your needle goes, and this is where the fabric is. So here's your fabric, whatever design it is. Okay, so it's, a, it's too small of a zigzag because it's only one millimeter wide, one millimeter this wide teeny tiny movement. One swing goes on and the other swing goes right off and it's one millimeter. So there's, it's just barely catching. I can actually go 0 0.5 millimeter, but I found out you really don't have to and you can, it still is invisible. So that's what's taking place on here. And 
if I focus on that needle, I can't even see it swing. So it almost looks like a straight stitch if you're sewing. And I think I have my pressure set too high. Let's see. Yeah, my pressure is set for the highest. You want your pressure set for the lowest? Thank you. I'm glad you like my teaching. Country Silkwormers. I think you told me your name last time, but I don't remember what it is. So as I'm sewing, I have all of this and all of this stuff in front. My elbow pads. I, was, I didn't see them. This, this is awesome for doing the applique gluing part because your arms are resting on that as you use the, and you, you'll be just like so relaxed. It, it won't be stressful or physically act. You'll feel like you're just kind of taking a break when doing the, the gluing part. And I, I, I was looking for it and couldn't find it, but I had it stacked up right here behind my machine. <laughs> all right, so here we go. So without all of this stuff on the table, stopping the fabric from moving, it would be easier. And whenever I do have fabric like that, what I do is I hold it up instead of putting my hands down on it. And in a second, I'm going to let you see just how close this is. So where my focus is on is the guide, not the sewing machine needle. That's why you see how I'm able to sit up instead of sitting like this, which is traditionally what you'd have to do if you use a stitch that's only a millimeter wide. And I'm going to go ahead now and take it down to half a millimeter for the next part of it. I have a marker and I'll show you where I can't see where I've stitched because you can't see it. That's the whole point of it. So I'm going to draw a, a mark so that you know that this section is one half millimeter wide. It would be nearly impossible for a human being to guide that wide or that narrow of a, of a width. It is like trying to touch your fingers, but not that that is how tiny the movement is of the needle left to right. That's how small of amount of thread that or a stitch that goes on the fabric. And this is why I call it invisible applique in the instructions, no matter how you purchase the satin edge foot, you get the settings for invisible applique. You don't get the pattern to sew it, but you get the settings for how to set up your machine and the foot to do it. So refer to that, or you can refer to this video. Hi Lynn. So it's seven o'clock in the morning for you. Yeah, your order shipped, I think. All right. If it didn't ship and you ordered a presser, it will ship tomorrow because I'm doing the presser, the pressers no matter what tomorrow. So as I'm going around this, I'm, I'm more lifting the fabric up. I'm not stretching it out of shape. Having a little hold light underneath would also be great. I forgot to change the width. No, I did. I changed it. I just didn't check it. And you should always check the foot when you change the width. That's how you break needles. So now the movement is even smaller. And I should have gone to that 10 needle. So this is probably a 9014 needle. It shows the hole shows up more with a 9014 needle. So I have a little bit of the fabric kind of not moving. If you lower the needle, then you can lift and and spin it around. The smaller the circle, the more stopping is required in order to not, not cause this to happen on the main part of your fabric because your hands are planting or planted and causing that to happen. The stitch is too narrow to pucker the fabric. So if there's any puckering, it's our hands and how we're holding the fabric. Needle down lift and I always have the needle on the outside when I when I lower it to turn so rare that I lower my needle I get asked that almost all the time why are, why don't you lower your needle why don't you do that <laughs> the less you lower the needle the less likely you are to have the bird's nest appear on the bottom of your fabric Having a sewing machine without needle position or needle down option 
I learned to do it before it ever came out. But on the mechanical machines, they used to have the needle would stop anywhere. It would stop left, right, up and down, halfway there. And so having a machine stop all the way up, you know, the tension is released. It, it allows you to move things around easier and you're less likely to have broken needles and broken thread and shredding thread. So the needle should be a 70-10 for this. You would actually suit the, the needle size to the fabric. So if you're gonna put an applique on gabardine or leather or blue jean, and you can do this and put it on leather, then you would suit the needle to the fabric you're, that is beneath the applique. But it's the thread being four thousandths in diameter that allows us to do the tiny needle, which makes the smallest possible hole. So I'll lower the needle, lift, and turn. I got so much stuff everywhere. Did you guys hear that fall over on my table? What's scary? So I'm not having to worry about my needle hitting the wire because I have it set to the side of it. It's not swinging over it. I don't know what I said. That sounded scary. So that's all perfectly secure. Do you see any stitching? I should have tied a knot. Oh, I, see, I still can. <laughs> if you can't turn a knot or tie a knot with your machine, you pull out a length of thread and pull it through to the back and tie it off on the back. And when you, if you can see any stitch, after the fabric is m manipulated in any way and rubbed like this, all of the, the stabilizer gets soft and the stitch tucks under and becomes completely gone. I've had people get their magnifying glasses out to try to find the stitch. And at shows when I, when I would do a sample of this, I would just do it and throw it out and Anyone with glasses would take them off and people without glasses would put them on and try to find the stitch. And so it's, it's fabulous and it makes it so that you can create a large quilt in a very short amount of time, much faster than hand sewing, much healthier for you also. Because holding something small like a hand needle for long periods of time can cause joint damage. Another stitch you can use is the petite machine applique stitch, which is a one millimeter wide satin stitch. I'll do a little bit of that because I did promise to do more than one technique today. And we're, and we're just at four o'clock now. 408, not too bad. Hi, Tinkerbell. Someone want to say hi? Come here. Oh, she wants to say hi. They know what time it is. Four o'clock, she jumps down. Hello, sweetheart. And my puppy. Oh, oh my goodness. There you go. Every every day after the show, I give them T-R-E-A-T-S's. Okay, I, I'll, do, I'll do it a little bit on this. That'll be fun. Then I can post a picture of this for you guys to examine closely. Because when I shoot with my camera and then I, I post pictures of each Thursday after the show, the next morning, generally, I will post the pictures that I took. I don't know. I'm going to do the other thing because I, I, I think I'd like to cut out all the butterflies and, and make an actual, uh, an entire shape for you guys so i'm gonna do where's that yellow fabric that i did there it is with the invisifil thread because it's 100 weight and it is color you can do an applique around this with the tiniest zigzag stitch possible using the 10 needle again, which I still do not have on the machine. So I'm gonna change 
my thread to a colored thread so that you can see the stitch. It snowed a little bit last night up here. Went from almost feeling like laying out in the sun last week to it's snowing almost, or snowing. The joys of living in Arizona in the springtime is we can have all the seasons in one day. Okay, so this is a beautiful olive green color. I don't know. Let me pick a better color, more complimentary color for that yellow. I got a blue. Come on, arm. It's four o'clock on a Thursday. Almost time to stop. It's it's hot where you are at 37 degrees. Where do you reside? That 37 is hot. <laughs> Camera. All right, so I, I have the exact same stitch. Don't you have other fabric? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, that's silly. Blue. If I only had a brain, oh my goodness. I wish I had another piece already turned under besides my hexi. This isn't finished because it's got, the raw edge hasn't been turned yet. She's not leaving the room. She's down at my feet looking up at me. <laughs> I know that out of sight is out of mind with you, Mom, so I'm going to stay here. I've done a lot of applique. So this is the needle turn version or invisible applique. And I'm skipping the step of doing the, the fusing or what we just did with the glue. But I just want you to see how, how small of a zigzag you can do. So we bring the needle down off the edge, bring the guide over to the needle. That is the outside swing. That's the right swing of the teeny tiny zigzag stitch. And as it is As it is, the stitch length is relatively far apart. A two millimeter zigzag stitch or stitch length is a really close hand stitch, and but not close enough for a satin stitch. So I'm gonna shorten the stitch length. I'm at a 1.4 standard stitch length automatically in the machine. Mm -hmm. I'm taking it down now to, I have it at 0 0.6. Let's see how that looks. This is a really thin thread, so it's going to take a really short stitch length to have it be a solid stitch. This is only one half millimeter wide satin stitched. I'm going to go to one. It's a little bit too small. And I got to take the stitch setting down even smaller. So I'm going to 0 0.3 on the stitch length, which is almost non-existent. This needle's too big. I could have done that with a 70-10 needle. So what I'm doing is making sure the fabric never separates from the guide. Gently pushing toward the foot, not pushing down at all. The tension, I'm going to take the tension down to 3.0. Because the thread has to go up on that fold, so it needs a little bit less tightness on the thread. So that can look prettier. I'm not pushing or pulling the fabric through. I'm gently pushing toward the foot so that it can push back the other way. We are using the science of resistance. When we push 
in one direction and something pushes back equally, whatever is in the middle of that is trapped. And that's why I can sew so accurately at a high rate of speed. And this is a really short stitch length. It's brutal to the fabric. So I wouldn't do this generally without a stabilizer that's permanent. So this is, if we were to be American on this stitch width, this stitch width is uh, 20 thousandths of an inch. And this is about 20 thousandths of an inch. So teeny tiny. So now you can tell that the, the camera is set to a real high setting. And I could have gone and made it completely solid. But what you can do, if you use this type of a technique where the fabric is applied to a stabilizer and the stabilizer is not applied to the fabric, then what you can do is flip your fabric over. Where are those tweezers? You take a, a pair of tweezers and grab the fabric and try to pull it apart. And then you cut a little slit, get your scissors in there. And you have more than one option here. If you do that, then you can stuff it. And then you can take a piece of fusible interfacing and just fuse over that and iron it and it will hold it shut. And then you would have a rounded circle, a puffy sphere. So you can do the planets on a piece of fabric and have them all bulge out and have that be a quilt wouldn't that be fun for a little grandson or granddaughter and in, and then if you want to do it on a quilt and you don't want anyone to feel the weight of the quilt then you cut and go up to the stitching that you did to applique and you cut a quarter inch away and this is the the way to make it so that people can't tell how you did it. They're, they're like, did, did you sew that circle in a hole that was shaped like a circle? And you're like, yeah, that's what I did. Cause I'm, cause I'm amazing. So see how that is. So when you're on the other side, now it just is like a seam allowance. And that is how you can sew non geometric shapes onto a piece of fabric, no matter what kind of fabric, doesn't have to be a quilt, can be a jacket, can be a top, can be a blouse. And like I did a poodle skirt class when I was younger, I taught that and we did the poodle and the poodle was puffy in certain areas and, and uh, that was fun using the same technique. So I hope that you enjoyed this session. And do you have any more questions before I end for the day? Wouldn't that be fun? Maybe I should do that. Do a little, like a, maybe a pillow, the solar system pattern so that we can do the planets. We could take, this This is with the octahips, you can take the octahips and you can draw the earth and then take that fabric and then put it on the fabric like this and stuff it. It's, it's quite something. We can have a lot of fun, can't we? Get a millimeter ruler that has the regular American numbers on one side and the metric on the other. And the cutter pillar pads are set up that way. So you will, you can, when your ruler is on your 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 mat which comes with the cutter pillar tablets hey, and if you don't have a tablet you can still buy the mats you can buy them separate uh, they are very affordable cutting mats and so when you lay your ruler on it when you're looking at the American well you can just glance up and see what the metric is and learn gradually your metric settings as a sewing machine mechanic I had to learn both and uh, and an inventor of products working with mold makers. We use American here in America. So thousands of an inch is like someone's hair, very small and smaller than a millimeter. Any other questions? 
Yes, everything that I just showed you is 100% machine washable and throw in the dryerable. Invisible thread, nylon thread does not melt in the iron, just as your pantyhose do not suddenly disappear inside of the dryer if you wash and dry them. And the pantyhose being made from nylon. Thank you all for joining me. Hi, Kathleen. You love your caterpillar? Isn't it lovely? It's buried under here, but. So now you know I don't just use batiks. Sometimes I use pretty fabric. And as I was going through my pretty fabric, I was going, <gasps> <sighs> it's harder for me to use these. They're like little paintings. I just love this one. This is from Lorelei's Designs. No, maybe not. She doesn't, she's not the only one that does this. Man, there's no writing on the salvage. I'll try to find this one for you, should any of you want to know what it what it is. But this is so good for little kids that like dinosaurs. And you can use this as a pillowcase uh, edge on a pillowcase. That was another thing I was going to teach you guys, how to do the burrito style of making a pillowcase. Because when I make my finish my quilt, I need to make pillowcases for it as well. And it's a great gift for children to give them pillowcases. It's also a really, really, really great technique for skirts. Doing a burrito style top to a skirt. And uh, it's, almost, it's almost cheating. The satin edge foot with the invisible applique technique allows you to do a burrito style using invisible the invisible applique technique and you don't have as many stitches to do so that'll make sense when I actually show you the actual project as usual I can just keep talking all day no the cutter pillar doesn't come with the um, European 240 but do you have an adapter they use the same as your cell phone for the plugins. So if it has, for what plugs into the machine, if you have a, a uh, on this one, this one is not, this one they have a, the little round one, but on the smaller tablets, they are the same connection as your cell phone. I'm trying to remember the, the mini, mini USB. And I asked them, I go, if I lose my cord, can I use a cell phone plug? And he, and he, and the, the owner and designer of the cutter pillar said, yes, go ahead. You can use a cell phone cord. Good to know in case you ever iron your cord and melt it or something. I shouldn't say things like that because now it might happen. Okie dokie. So I'm going to, I'm going to end. And what did I say that I would do next week? Can't remember. I'll have to watch the replay as well. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. I also have a school that you can join, create.clairowley.com. The address is in the description of this video. If it isn't yet, it will be soon. And If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.